Hello. Nice Michael. To you. Uh, great pleasure. It's really a privilege to be in this uh, great emporium, this great house. I have here um, a tailor-made suit, but it cost me less than a thousand. I believe your suits start at about five thousand. Now, why should I graduate from this to that? Well, I think what people are buying into when they come here is they're buying into our house style. And with that, they're also getting the, the service of our experienced cutters who are going to make a full bespoke pattern and also our tailors down in the basement that are going to make a, a handmade garment that takes a lot more hours than, say, what a, a factory off the peg product would, would take to make. And uh, it's mainly to do with the, uh, the inner workings and what goes on underneath. So it's what's under the bonnet rather than what you can see. And are the suits from this part of town broadly what we call Savile Row? Are they still admired around the world? We get a global audience. Um, mm -hmm. Why are they buying a Savile Row suit? What do they tell you is special about it? I think they're buying into the, the, the quality and craftsmanship that goes into it, that, whether that be the materials or the makeup and labour that's gone into it. A lot of the suits here are made to last and we get many suits that come in that are older than me, that just need a small repair, maybe a button or a quick repair on the lining but they are it's an investment at the end of the day the formula and the way the suits are made is pretty much the same so you get a suit that's 35 40 years old and it was, all the methods are all exactly the same as what we do today and that works for you you don't you don't feel you have to do anything different no no how, how important is the overseas customer to you very important. It makes up well over 50% of our business. We do two big tours of the States. The orders are taken there, but everything is, everything is done through the hub here. So they, they will be shown fabric samples uh, in miniature fabric books like what we offer here. And we, apart from being in a hotel room, the offering is no different from what they'll get from here in the shop. It strikes me, we talk about things not being made in Britain anymore. We don't have much manufacturing. But it sounds like here is a British skill which has remained largely unchanged and largely unchanged in its success as well. Yes, yes. Mainly British cloth? Predominantly British cloth. This, for example, uh, is from where? Huddersfield. So we tend to favour the English cloth. So once the customer's chosen their fabric, we take them into the fitting rooms and they will have their measures taken by a coat cutter who will do the top half and who's trained specifically in that part and then a trouser cutter who will do the bottom half. And then the business stuff begins here, by the way. Of course, bit. yes, so in the cutting room. The cutting room. Samuel? Yes. Michael? Pleased to meet you. So, uh, obviously, cutting goes on here. Mm -hmm. now, how is the process taken forward? Once the measures have been taken, we cut the paper pattern. So, at Anderson Shepherd, we split the labour between trousers and coats. So, Mr. Haynes over there, who is a coat cutter, he just focused on jackets and I just focused on trousers. So the first thing we do is we get a long piece of paper and we cut the paper pattern. So each, each customer has a unique paper pattern and we have them all displayed up there. But how have you produced that bit of paper So the, measuring somebody? On trousers there are seven measures we take and then we have a drafting method. So there is a method that's been passed down for generations from every Anderson Shepherd trouser cutter. It's not written down anywhere, so it's just passed on knowledge and we know how to convert those seven measures to these two pieces of paper which relate to a gentleman's lower half. <laughs> Remarkable. Okay. Yes. So it looks like you also then chalk it out. Yes. So once the paper pattern is cut, uh, we then use that to order a length. And then once the cloth comes in, we strike. So we lay the paper. Strike. This is called striking. Oh. So the, the act of chalking around the pattern onto the cloth is called striking or striking in. And in some tailors, there's a position just known as a striker. There's someone that, that's all they do. They just strike, strike, strike constantly. Uh, and so here, mm -hmm. to strike, strike, strike is actually to work, work, work. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you lay it down and then we, we chalk around it. Um, and then these uh, pieces of cloth either side, they're known as fit up. So they're not wasted. So for example, this length here, the tailor can use this to make the waistband. How long do you expect a, a, a pattern like this to last? Because let's face it, we... We do change size and shape, and on the whole, in one direction. Sometimes, if the customer changes shape so drastically, we just can't, or we just can't reuse it. But you see, on an old one here, where we've added on, like rings of a tree. That's charming. Yeah, isn't it? as he's grown. But we, we try, if we can, we try and keep the original pattern. How did you learn 
this business and when did you learn it? Uh, so I came here as, a, as an apprentice. I was at the London College of Fashion studying oh. tailoring uh, and through a series of work experiences I've got to a position here. So I actually dropped out of university to take the apprenticeship uh, and I've been here, it's my seventh year. But you learn on the job, like any true apprentice uh, but we do also have a Savile Row Bespoke Association which sort of oversees qualifications. So tailors can actually work towards a city and guilds qualification in tailoring. So when people wonder why they're paying quite a lot for a suit, mm-hmm. it's things like this, it's skills like this, Absolutely. It's techniques yeah. and traditions like this, mm-hmm. cloth like this, yeah. that is important. Yeah. Yes. There's, uh, on a bespoke suit, so something like I'm wearing, there's about 70 hours of actual work into it. And that will be between about four or five people, including myself. Hello, are you Isa? Yes. And Isa, nice to meet you. As I understand it, you are an intern. Yes. Meaning I'm, that you're learning. Yes. I'm an intern at Anderson Shepherd. I've been here for nine months. Um, I've been learning how to cut and construct. Uh, so when you go back to college, you will be a much better student because? I mean, the techniques that I've learned here is so specific that is going to help me I mean throughout my life really because it helps it's not just jackets and trousers because once you learn how to cut and construct you can do quite literally anything you can obviously it's a menswear tailoring house but if you want to do women's like to cut dresses and everything it's you kind of understand the body and the shape and how something should fit around it and you kind of get that aspect of what's right and what's wrong. And are you very aware that you're doing something important for exporting, for the, for the balance of payments for Britain? Uh, it's not something I think of on a daily basis, but maybe I'll start to. <laughs> no, come on. You, mu- you must feel awfully proud that you're selling to people abroad. That must mean that they think your it, product is the best. Yes, and it, it's nice to know that, you know, Britain's greatest export is actually uh, its suits, I would say. As people the world over still want to dress like an Englishman.